On First Entering Westminster Abbey by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Holy of England, since my light is short and faint, O oh, rather by the sun anew of timeless passion set my dial true, That with thy saints in thee I may consort, And wafted in the cool and shadowed port of poets, Seem a little sail long due, and be as one the call of memory drew unto the saddle void since agent court not now for secular love's unquiet lease receive my soul who wrapped in thee erewhile hath broken tryst with transitory things but seal with her a marriage and a peace eternal on thine edward's altar isle above the stormless sea of ended kings end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Fog by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Fog Like bodiless water passing in a sigh Through palsied streets the fatal shadows flow And in their sharp disastrous undertow Suck in the morning sun and all the sky the towery vista sings upon the eye as if it heard the horns of jericho black and dissolved nor could the founders know how what was built so bright should daily die thy mood with man's is broken and blent in city of stains and ache of thought doth drown the generous light in which thy life began great as thy dole is smirch it with his sin greater and elder yet the love of man full in thy look though the dark visors down end of poem this recording is in the public domain saint peter ad vincula by louise imogen gyne read for librivox dot org by eva davis saint peter ad vincula too well i know pacing the place of awe three queens young save in trouble moulder by more in his halo monmouth's mocking eye the eagle essex in a harpy's claw seymour and dudley and stout heads that saw sundown of scotland how with treasons lie white martyrdoms rank in a company breaker and builder of the eternal law oft as i come the bitter garden row of ruined roses hanging from the stem where winds of old defeat yet batter them infects me suddenly must i depart ere thought of men's injustice then and now add to these aisles one other broken heart End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Strikers in Hyde Park by Louise Imogen Guiney, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Strikers in Hyde Park. A wolf reversed, the fatal shuttles weave. How slow, but never once they slip the thread. Hither upon the Georgian idlers tread, Up spacious ways the lindens interleave, Clouding the royal air since yester-eve. Come men bereft of time and scant of bread, Loud who were dumb, immortal who were dead, Through the cowed world their kingdom to retrieve. What ails thee, England? Altar, mart, and grange, dream of the knife by night not so not so the clear republic waits the general throw along her noonday mountains open range god be with both for one is young to know her mother's rote of evil and of change end of poem this recording is in the public domain Changes in the Temple by Louise Imogen Guiney, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. 
Changes in the Temple The cry is at thy gates, thou darling ground, again, for oft ere now thy children went beggared in wrath, and parting greeting sent some red old alley with a dial crowned, some house of honour in a glory bound with lives and deaths of spirits excellent, some tree rude taken from his kingly tent, hard by a little fountain's friendly sound. Oh, for Virginia's hand, if only that maintain the whole, and spoil these spoilings soon. Better the scowling strand should lose, alas, her walled oasis, and where once it was, all mournful in the cleared quadrangle sat Echo and Ivy and the loitering moon. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lights of London by Louise Imogen Guinea. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Lights of London. The evenfall, so slow on hills, has shot far down into the valley's cold extreme, untimely midnight. Spire and roof and stream, like fleeing spectres, shudder and are not. The Hampstead hollies, from their sylvan plot, yet cloudless, lean to watch as in a dream from chaos climb with many a hasty gleam london one moment fallen and forgot her booth begin to flare her gases bright prick door and window street and lane obscure sparkle and swarm with nothing true nor sure full as a marsh of mist and winking light heaven thickens over heaven that cannot cure her tear by day her fevered smile by night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Doves by Louise Imogen Guiney, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Doves. Ah, if man's boast and man's advance be vain, and yonder bells of bow loud echoing home and the lone tree, for know it, and the dome, that monstrous island of the middle main. If each inheritor must sink again under his sires, as falleth where it clomb, back on the gone wave, the disheartened foam. I crossed Cheapside, and this was in my brain. What folly lies in forecasts and in fears, like a wide laughter sweet and opportune, wet from the fount. Three hundred doves of Paul's shook their warm wings, drizzling the golden noon, and in their rain cloud vanished up the walls. God keeps, I said, our little flock of years. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In the Reading Room of the British Museum by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. In the reading room of the British Museum. Praised be the moon of books that doth above a world of man the sunken past behold, and colour spaces else too void and cold to make a very heaven again thereof, as when the sun is set behind a grove and faintly unto nether ether rolled all night his whiter image and his mould grows beautiful with looking on her love. Thou, therefore, moon of so divine a ray, lend to our steps both fortitude and light. Feebly along a venerable way they climb the infinite, or perish quite. Nothing are days and deeds to such as they, while in this liberal house thy face is bright. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Sunday Chimes in the City by Louise Imogen Guinea. Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter. Across the bridge, where in the morning blow the wrinkled tide turns homeward, and is fain homeward to drag the black seagoer's chain and the long yards of Dowgate dipping low, 
Across dispeopled ways, patient and slow, St. Magnus and St. Dunstan call in vain, From Wren's forgotten belfries in the rain, Down the blank wharves the dropping octaves go, Forbidden on these, though no man heed, They shower a subtle beauty on the empty hour, From all their dark throats aching and outblown, I in the prayerless places welcome most, Like the last gull that up a naked coast Deploys her white and steady wing alone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Porch in Belgravia by Louise Imogen Guiney, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. A Porch in Belgravia. When, after dawn, the lordly houses hide, Till you fall foul of it, some piteous guest, Some girl the damp stones gather to their breast, Her gold hair rough, her rebel garment wide, Who sleeps, with all that luck and life denied camped round, And dreams how seaward and southwest, Blue over Devon farms, the smoke rings rest, And sheep and lambs ascend the lit hillside, Dear of your charity, speak low, step soft, pray for a sinner. Planet-like and still, best hearts of all are sometimes set aloft, only to see and pass, nor yet deplore even wrong itself, crowned wrong inscrutable, which cannot but have been forevermore. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. York Stairs by Louise Imogen Guinea. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. York Stairs. Many a musing eye returns to thee against the formal street disconsolate, who kept in green domains thy bridal state with young tide waters leaping at thy knee and lest the ravening smoke and enmity corrode thee quite thy lover sighs and straight desires thee safe afar too graceful gate throned on a terrace of the boboli nay nay thy use is here stand queenly thus till the next fury teach the time and us leisure and will to draw a serious breath not wholly where thou art the soul is cowed nor the fooled capital proclaims aloud barter is god while beauty perisheth end of poem this recording is in the public domain in the docks by louise imogen guinea read for librivox dot org by sonia in the docks where the bales thunder till the day is done and the wild sounds with wilder odors cope where over crouching sail and coiling rope lascar and moor along the gangway run where stifled thames spreads in the pallid sun a hive of anarchy from slope to slope flag of my birth my liberty my hope i see thee at the masthead joyous one o thou good guest so oft as young and warm to the home wind thy hoisted colours bound away away from this too thoughtful ground sodden with human trespass and despair thee only from the desert from the storm a sick mind follows into eden air end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Towpath by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Furrow to furrow, oar to oar succeeds, Each length away, more bright, more exquisite. The sister shells that hither, thither flit, Strew the long stream like dropping maple seeds. A comrade on the marge now lags, now leads, 
who with short calls his pace doth intermit, an angry pan afoot, but if he sit, auspicious pan among the river reeds, west of the glowing hayricks, tawny black, where waters by their warm escarpments run, two lovers, slowly crossed from Kennington, print in the early dew a married track, and drain their romad eve, and spend the sun, ere, in laborious health, the crews come back. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old Dial of Corpus by Louise Imogen Guiney, read for LibriVox.org, by Eva Davis. The Old Dial of Corpus Warden of hours and ages, here I dwell, who saw young Kebel pass, with sighing shook for good unborn, and towards a willow nook, pole princely in the senate and the cell, and doubting the near boom of Osney Bell, turning on me that sweetly subtle look, Erasmus in his breast an attic book. Peacemakers all their dreams to ashes fell, not steadfast may I image nor attain, save steadfast labor, futile must I grope after my God, like him in constant bright. But sun and shade must unto you remain alternately a symbol and a hope. Men, spirits, of Emmanuel your light. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Ad Antiquarium by Louise Imogen Guiney, read for LibriVox.org, by Eva Davis. Ad Antiquarium My gentle Aubrey, who in everything hadst of thy city's youth so lovely lust, yet never lineal to her towers august, thy spirit could fix or perfectly upbring. Sleep, sleep. I ope, not unremembering, thy comely manuscript, and interthrust, find delicate hueless leaves, more sad than dust. Two centuries unkissed of any spring, filling a homesick page beneath a lime, thy mood beheld, as mine thy debtors now, the endless terraces of ended time. Vague in green twilight, Goodly was release into that past where these poor leaves and thou do freshen in the air of eldest peace. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Rooks in New College Gardens by Louise Imogen Guiney. Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Through rosy cloud and over thorny towers, Their wings with darkling autumn distance filled, From Isis valley border, hundred hilled, The rooks are crowding home as evening lowers. Not for men only and their musing hours, By battled walls did gracious Wickham build, These dewy spaces early sown and stilled, these dearest inland melancholy bowers. Blessed birds, a book held open on the knee below, is all they guess of Adam's blight, with surer art the while and simpler right. They follow truth in some monastic tree, where breathe against their docile breasts by night. The scholar's star, the star of sanctity. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On the Pre-Reformation Churches About Oxford by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia On the Pre-Reformation Churches About Oxford Imperial Ifley, Cumner bowered in green, And Templar Sandford in the boatman's call, and sweet-belt Appleton, and Marcham Wall, 
that dust upon adoring ivies lean meek bincy dorchester where streams convene bidding on graves thy solemn shadow fall clear cassington that soars perpetual holton and hampton poil and towers between if one of all in your sad courts that come beloved and disparted be your own kin to the souls ye had while yet endures some memory of a great communion known at home in quarries of old christendom ah mark him he will lay his cheek to yours end of poem this recording is in the public domain on the same continued by louise imogen guinea read for librivox dot org by sonia on the same continued is this the end is this the pilgrim's day for dread for dereliction and for tears rather from grass and air and many spheres in prophecy his spirit sinks away and under english eaves more still than they far off incoming wonderful he hears the long arrested the believing years carry the sea wall shall he sighing say farewell to faith for she is dead at best who had such beauty or with kisses lain for witness on her darkened doors go by with a new psalm o banished light so nigh of them was i who bore thee and who blessed even here remember me when thou shalt reign end of poem this recording is in the public domain Oxford 7 A December Walk by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk Whithersoever cold and fair ye flow, Calm tides of moonlit midnight bear my mind. Past Christ Church gate with leafy frost entwined, and Merton in a huge tiara's glow, And groves in bridal gossamers below, St. Mary's armored spire, And whence aligned in altered eminence For dawn to find, Sleep the droll Caesars, Hooded with the snow. White sacraments of weather Shine on me, up bear my footfall and my fancy sift lest either blemish an unsainted ground spread so with childhood bid with me outbound on recollected wing mine angel drift across new spheres of immortality end of poem this recording is in the public domain Undertones and Magdalen by Louise Mijin Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter Fair are the finer creature sounds Of these is Magdalen full Her bees, the while they drop Cicerent in the garth from weeds atop And round the priestless pulpit Auguries of wrens in council from a hundred leaves and cherwell fish and laughter fain to stop the water plantain's way, and deer that crop delicious herbage under coral trees, the cry for silver and gold in Christendom without threads not her silence and her dark, only against the isolate tower there break low rhythmic rumours of good men to come, invasive seas of hushed approach that make memorial music. With the ear but hark. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Port Meadow by Louise Imogen Guinea. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia.
Port Meadow The plain gives freedom. Hither, from the town, how oft a dreamer and a book of yore escaped the lamplit square, and heard no more from Cowley border search the game's renown, but bade the vernal sky with spices drown his head by Plato's in the grass. Before, yon oar that's never old, the sunset oar, at medley lock was slain in music down. So seeming far the confines and the crowd, the gross routine, the cares that vex and tire from this large light, sad thoughts in it, high driven, go happier than the inly moving cloud that lets Sir Vesture fall, a floss of fire, abstracted on the ivory hills of heaven. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Oxford 10 Martyr's Memorial by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk Such natural debts of love our Oxford knows So many ancient dues undesecrate I marvel how the landmark of a hate For witness unto future time she chose how out of her corroborate ranks arose the three in great denial only great for arts enshrining thus averted straight my soul to seek a holier captain goes that sweet adventurer whom truth befell when as the synagogues were watching not whose crystal name on royal aureole hangs like a shield who to an outland spot led hence beholds his star and counts it well of all his dear domain to live forgot end of poem this recording is in the public domain a last view by Louise Imogen Guinea, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. A last view, where down the glen, across the shallow ford, stretches the open aisle from scene to scene, by halted horses silently we lean, gazing enchanted from our steeper sward. How yon low loving skies of April hoard an hundred pinnacles, and how with sheen of spike and ball her languid clouds between grey oxford grandly rises riverward sweet on those dim long dedicated walls silver as rain the frugal sunshine falls slowly sad eyes resign them bound afar dear beauty dear tradition fare you well and powers that aye a glow in you impel our quickening spirits from the slime we are End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Oxford 12. Retrieval. By Louise Imogen Guinea. Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Stars in the bosom of thy triple tide, June air and ivy on thy grassel stone. O glory of the West, as thou wert sown, be perfect, O miraculous abide. And still, for greatness flickering from thy side, eternal alchemist, upraise, enthrone true heirs in true succession, later blown from that same seed of fire which never died. Nor love shall lack her solace to behold ranged to the morrow's melancholy verge thy lights uprisen in thoughts disclosing spaces and round some beacon spirit stable old in radiant broad tumultuary surge forever the young voices the young faces end of poem this recording is in the public domain.
A Ballad of Kenel by Luis Imogen Guiney Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo A Ballad of Kenel In Clent Cowbatch, Kenelm, King Born, lieth under a thorn. It was a goodly child, sweet as the gusty May. It was a night that broke on his play. A fair and coaxing night, O little liege, said he, Thy sister bids thee come after me. A pasture rolling west lies open to the sun, Bright shod with primroses doth it run. And forty oaks be nigh, apart and face to face, And cow bells all the morn in the space. And there the slow thorn bush beside the water grows, And hides her mocking head under snows. Black stalks of foam with bloom, and never a leaf hath she, Thou crystal of the realm, follow me. Up looked the undefiled, all things ere I was born, My sister found, now find, me the thorn. They travelled down the lane, an hour's dust they made, The belted breast of one bore a blade. The primroses were out, the eyelid oaks were green, the cowbells pleasantly tinked between. The brook was beaded gold, the thorn was burgeoning, where evil Ascabert slew the king. He hid him in the ground, nor washed away the dyes, nor smoothed the fallen curls from his eyes. No father had the babe to bless his bed forlorn, no mother now to weep by the thorn. There fell upon that place a shaft of heavenly light, the thorn in Mercia spake ere the night. Beyond a sister sees her crowned period, but at my root a lamb seeth God. On to each even so is due before the cloud, the guilty glory past of the proud. Boy Kenelm has the song, Saint Kenelm has the bower, his thorn a thousand years is in flower. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Two Irish Peasant Songs by Louise Imogen Guinea. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Two Irish Peasant Songs. One. In Leinster. I try to knead and spin, but my life is slow to wind. Oh, I long to be alone and walk abroad a mile. Yet if I walk alone and think of naught at all, why from me that's young should the wild tears fall? The shower stricken earth the earth-colored streams they breathe on me awake and moan to me in dreams and yonder ivy fondling the broad castle wall it pulls upon my heart till the wild tears fall the cabin door looks down a first lighted hill and far as lechlin cross the fields are green and still but once i hear the blackbird in laughing hatches call the foolishness is on me and the wild tears fall. 2. In Ulster Tis the time of the year, if the quick and bow be staunch, the green like a breaker rolls steady up the branch, and surges in the spaces and floods the trunk and heaves, in jets of angry spray that is the underweight of leaves and from the thorny companies the foamy petals fall and waves of jolly ivy wing along a windy wall tis the time of the year 
the marsh is full of sound and good and glorious it is to smell the living ground the crimson-headed catkin shakes above the pasture bars the daisy takes the middle field and spangles it with stars and down the bank into the lane the primroses do crowd all colored like the twilight moon and spreading like a cloud tis the time of the year in early light and glad the lark has a music to drive a lover mad the downs are dripping nightly the breathe it dams arise deliciously the freshets cool the grayling's golden eyes and lying in a row against the chilly north the sheep in closer place without a wind for little lambs to sleep tis the time of the year i turn upon the height to watch from my harrow the dance of going light and if before the sun be hid come slowly up the vale honora with her dimpled throat honora with her pail hey but there's a many march for me and many and many a lass i fall to work and song again and let honora pass end of poem this recording is in the public domain in a ruin after a thunderstorm by louise imogen guinea read for librivox .org by sonia in a ruin after a thunderstorm keep of the norman old to flood and cloud thou dost reproach me with thy sunset look that in our common manners i forsook hope the last fear and stood impartial proud almost almost while ether spake aloud death from the smoking stones my spirit shook into thy hollow as leaves into a brook no more than they by heaven's assassins cowed but now thy thousand scarred steep is flecked with the calm kisses of the light delayed breathe on me better valor to subject my soul to greed of life and grow afraid lest ere her fight's full term the architect see downfall of the stronghold that he made end of poem this recording is in the public domain To a Child by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Recording Person To a Child Dear Owain, when you are minded to gather the perfect thing, over Averbegani, climb in the evening. I have seen where Orcus dances a saraband with the spring. Where Samphire leans to ocean and shakes on the world, he saith, or the brood of the peasant ragweed, Innocent, sweet of breath, runs with the wild Welsh river that never has heard of death. Where thrift with the foot shell tinted on the dark coast road delays, and foxglove flames in a ruin, and Campion meekly lays on a crag's uneven shoulder her satiny cheek for days. Well, these in their mortal beauty, and these in their youth abound, but over Averbegani, past sunset hour, I found. O holy grail of a flower, the sun on the hilltop ground. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In a Perpendicular Church by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Thomas Peter The slackened arches never lose their beauty of alarm. The tall lines frown along the wall, like angels, sword in arm. And where the vaults diverge, a grove with fancied snow or spread goes light among a myriad panes, with dust upon her head. England of old most innocent, whose flower of skill achieved failed quick as Lammas lilies, when thy hand no more believed. What hast thou here? Beloved but dead, held to thy childless heart. Alas, thy human all of heaven, thine own and only art. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A seventeenth-century song by Louise Imogen Guinea, 
Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. A seventeenth century song. She alone of shepherdesses with her blue disdaining eyes, who'd not hark a king that dresses all his lute in size, yet to win a Catherine I elect for mine emprise none is like her none above her whoso lifts my youth in me that the little more to love her were to leave her free but to win a catherine is mine utmost love's degree distance called delay and danger built the four walls of her bow she's no sweet for any stranger she's no valley flower and to win a catherine to her height my heart can tell up to beauty's promontory i will climb no loudly call perfect and escaping glory folly if i fall well to win a catherine to be worth her is my all end of poem this recording is in the public domain columba and the stork by louise imogen Guiney. Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis The cliffs of Iona were red with the moon to lee, A finger of rock in the infinite wind and the sea, And white on the cliffs as a volley of spray down flying, The beautiful stork of Ira in driven and dying. I stole from the choir, I fed him, I bathed his breast, Till in the late sunshine he lifted his wing to the west. Oh, the bells of the abbey were calling clearer and bolder, And I feared the pale admonishing face at my shoulder, Columns the saints. But I said with mine arm in air, Of that banished body and homesick spirit aware, The bird is of Ira, out of the storm I bore him and lo, he is free with the valleys of Ira before him, of the man that was Ira born and in exile yet. This the reproach I had and cannot forget. This the reproach I had and never another. Blessed art thou to have lightened the heart of my brother. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Chantry by Louise Imogen Guinea, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Chantry A loyal lady young, a knight for honour slain, All beauty and all quiet, sealed of old Upon their images that lie in quaff and morion. A moment since, through rifts and pauses of the rain, The day shot in. The lancet window showered again its moth-like play of silver, rose, and sapphire. Shone what arms of warring duchies glorious, bygone. Lombardy, Desmond, Malta, suited Aquitaine. The while, aloft in art's immortal summertide, fair is the carven hostel. Fortunate either guest, and men of moodier England pass, and here outside fury of toil alone and fate's diurnal storm hearts with the king of saints hearts beating light and warm to these your courage give that these attain your rest end of poem this recording is in the public domain april and govalon by Louise Imogen Guinea, read flibberbox.org by Thomas Peter. Slowly, slowly darken, primrose and pimpernel, heather of the rock, a shake on delicious air, slanted seas of spreading grass, green glow and tidal swell, under wind and pausing light, how variably fair. Larks from heaven descending, hush. Not a cloud shadow, where so late the romping lambs chased it in a ring. High along a little wood, quick rain sparkles go. Blorange walls the fairy world, the sole substantial thing. April in Govalon 
filled with a bright heartbreak, even fall on dying wing, swan-like and supreme. Soon, unheard, the Heides run up the hills to take seven lamps, and trail the seven all night in Iska stream. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On Leaving Winchester by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Nima A Palmer's Kiss on Thy Familiar Marge By Oriel City, whence the soul hath sight Of passional yesterdays, all gold and large, Arising to enrich our narrow night. Though others bless thee, who so blessed before hath pastured from the violent time apart and laved in supersensual light the heart alone with thy magnificent no more sweet court of roses now sweet camp of bees the hills that lean to thy white bed at dawn here for the clash of raging dynasties laughter of boys about a branchy lawn Hast thou a stain? Let ivy cover all, nor seem of greatness disinhabited, while spirits in their wonted splendor tread from close to close by Wolvesey's idle wall. Bright fins against thy lucid water leap, and nigh thy towers the nesting wood dove dwell. Be lenient, winter, and long moons and sleep upon thee but on me the sharp farewell. Happy art thou, O clad and crowned with rest, happy the shepherd, would that I were he, whose early way is step for step with thee, whose old brow fades on thine immortal breast. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On the Cenotaph of the Prince Imperial in St. George's Chapel by Louise Imogen Guiney, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. No young and exiled dust beneath is laid in soul and tale of high inheritance, though once compassion softly came and made a sleep at Windsor for the son of France. And sleep so long hath kept his image clear of pain's pollution and the Zulu spear. It seems his piteous self at last that lies in prayer's old heart built to the island skies. Low as the sifted snow is and meek as paradise. Thus passeth all ye dream of might and grace. Wherefore, beside the stones that cry it loud, let every musing spirit pause to trace the cloudburst of that empire like a cloud, and looking on these stainless brows proclaim peace unto Corsica's portentous name, and peace to her who in a sculptured boy, mold of her martyred beauty and her joy, reads here the end of Helen, the end of Helen's Troy. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Of Joan's Youth by Louise Imogen Guiney, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. I would unto my fair restore a simple thing, the flushing cheek she had before, out velveting no more, no more by Severn shore, the carmine grape, the moth's auroral wing. Ah, say how the winds in flooded grass unmoor the rose, or guileful ways the salmon pass to sea disclose. For so, alas, with love, alas, with fatal, fatal love, a girlhood goes. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Passing the Minster by Louise Imogen Guinea Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T. 
praise to thy awful beauty praise and peace o warden of my ways bid o'er the brow to thee i raise eternal unction full nobly and equally thou must take adoration of my dust and unto altitudes august thy low-born lover call bless me forget me not alone clear our men through thine arches blown a heart-string of that hope a stone fixed also in that wall end of poem this recording is in the public domain the yew tree by louise imogen guiney read for LibriVox.org by eva davis as i came homeward at merry christmas by the old church tower through the churchyard grass and saw there circled with graves all about the yew tree paternal the yew tree devout then this hot life blood was hard to endure o oh, death so i loved thee the soul love sure for stars slip in heaven they wander they break but under the yew tree not one heartache and ours what failure renewed and avowed but ah the long buried is leal and is proud now i came homeward at merry christmas by the wise grey tower through the green kind grass end of poem this recording is in the public domain shropshire landscape by louise imogen guinea read for librivox dot org by nemo Vague in a silver sheen, rayed from their armor green, some aged limes upstand. Nigh fields kindle and shine, beauty incarnadine, what thrill of what Uranian wine, so flushed the placid land. All tints of a broken wave, light the leafy architrave, far up the cloudy spring, and the ploughed soil ruddier glows than the ruby or the rose or the moon when the harvest goes beneath her blazing wing trees keep the broad outpost dusk by their dusky host long love severn glides thence towards the hilly south like a queen battle wroth upon a vermil saddle cloth the three spired city rides and a poem this recording is in the public domain The Graham Tartan to a Graham by Louise Imogen Guinea, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. The Graham Tartan to a Graham. Use me in honor, cherish me as ivy from a sacred tree, mine in the winds of war to close around the armor of Montrose and kiss the death wound of Dundee. Yet fear not me, nor such a state heroic and inviolate but green and white and azure wind about thy body and thy mind and by that length enlarge thy fate end of poem this recording is in the public domain in a london street by louise imogen guinea read for librivox dot org by sonia in a london street though sea and mount have beauty and this but what it can thrice fairer than their life the life here battling in the van the tragic gleam the mist and grime the dread endearing stain of time the sullied heart of man mine is the clotted sunshine a bubble in the sky that where it dare not enter steals in shrouded passion by and mine the saffron river sails and every plane tree that avails to rest an urban eye the bells the dripping gables the tavern's corner glare the cabs in firefly dartings the barrel organs air where one by one or two by two the headless babes are dancing through the gutters of the square not on sicilian headlands of song and old desire 
my spirit chose her pleasure house but in the london mire long long alone she loves to pace and find the music in the place as in a minster choir o deeds of awe and rapture o names of legendary still is it most of joy within your altered pale to be whose very ills i fain would slake mine angels are and help to make in hell a heaven for me end of poem this recording is in the public domain athesel abbey by louise imogen guinea read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter folly and time have fashioned of thee a songless reed o oh, not of earth impassioned thy music's mute indeed read from the chantry crannies the orchids burn and swing and where the arch began is rest for a raven's wing and up the dinted column quick tails of squirrels wave and black prodigious solemn a forest fills the nave still faithfuller still faster to ruin give thy heart perfect before the master i as thou wert thou art but i am wind that passes in ignorance and tears uplifted from the grasses blown to the void of years blown to the void yet sighing in thee to merge and cease last breath of beauty is dying of sanctity of peace though use nor place forever unto my soul befall by no beloved river set in a saintly wall do thou by builders given speech of the dumb to be Beneath thine open heaven, Athisel, pray for me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Romans in Dorset by Louise Imogen Guinea, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Romans in Dorset to A. B. A stupor on the heath and wrath along the sky space everywhere beneath the flat and treeless wold for us with darkest noon on high sullen quiet below but storm in upper air a wind from long ago in mouldy chambers of the cloud had ripped an arras there and singed the triple gloom and let through in a flame crowned faces of old rome regnant over rome's abandoned ground processional they came uprisen like any sun through vistas hollow gray aloft and one by one in brazen cask the emperors loomed large and sank away in ovals of one light each warrior eye and mouth a pageant brutal bright as if once over loudly passed jove's laughter in the south and dimmer these among some cameoed head aloof with ringlets heavy hung as golden stone crop comely grows around the castle roof an instant gusts again then heaven's impacted wall the hot insistent rain the thunder shock and of the past mirage no more at all no more the alien dream pursuing as we went with glory's cursed gleam nor sins of caesar's ruined line engulfed us innocent the vision great and dread corroded soul in view was empty agden spread her crimson summer weeds a shake in tempest but we knew what tacitus had borne in that wrecked world we saw and what thine heart uptorn my juvenile distraught with love of violated law end of poem this recording is in the public domain To Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey, by Louise Imogen Guinea, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. To Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey, young father poet, much in you I praise, adventure high, romantic, vehement, all with inviolate honor sealed and blend. 
to the axe edge that cleft your soldier base your friendships too your follies whims and frays and most your verse with strict imperious bend heard sweetly as from some old harper's tent and surging in the listener's brain for days at framlingham to-night if there should be no guest beyond the sea-borne wind that sighs no guard save moonlight's crossed and trailing spears and i your pilgrim call you oh let me in at the gate and smile into the eyes that sought you sorry down three hundred years End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. For Isaac Walton by Louise Imogen Guinea. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. For Isaac Walton. Can trout allure the rod of yore in itchen stream to dip? Or lover of her banks restore that sweet Socratic lip? Old fishing and wishing are over many a year oh hush thee oh hush thee heart innocent and dear again the foamy shallows fill the quiet clouds amass and soft as bees by catherine hill at dawn the anglers pass and follow the hollow in boughs to disappear oh hush thee oh hush thee heart innocent and dear nay rise not now nor with them take one golden freckled fool thy sons to-day bring each an ache for ancient arts to cool but father lie rather unheard and idle near o oh, hush thee o oh, hush thee heart innocent and dear while thought of thee to man is yet a sylvan playfellow never by thy marble they forget in pious cheer to go as air falls the prayer falls over kingly winchester o oh, hush thee o oh, hush thee heart innocent and dear end of poem this recording is in the public domain A footnote to a famous lyric by Louise Imogen Guinea, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. A footnote to a famous lyric. True love's own talisman, which here Shakespeare and Sidney failed to teach, a steel and velvet cavalier gave to our Saxon speech. Chief miracle of theme and touch that many envy and adore. I could not love thee, dear, so much loved i not honour more no critic born since charles was king but sighed in smiling as he read here's theft of the supremest thing a poet might have said young knight and wit and bow who won mid war's upheaval ladies praise was twelve of you ere you had done to blight our modern bays oh yet to you whose random hand struck from the dark whole gems like these archaic beauty never planned nor reared by one degrees which leaves an artist poor and art an earldom richer all her years to you dead on your shield apart be ave passed in tears twas virtue's breath inflamed your lyre heroic from the heart it ran nor for the shedding of such fire lives since a manlier man and till your strophe sweet and bold so lovely a eh, so lonely long love's self outdo dear lovelace hold the parapets of song end of poem this recording is in the public domain a memory of a breckenshire valley by louise imogen Guiney, read for librivox dot org by eva davis Petulis ubi valibus erens, subcicet eris montibus iscapater, ad posteros. 1. I followed thee, wild stream of paradise, white usk, forever showering the sunned bee, in the pink chestnut and the hawthorn tree, and all along, 
had magical surmise of mountains fluctuant in those vesper skies as unto mermen caverned in mid-sea far up the vast green reaches soundlessly the giant rollers form and fall and rise above thy poet's dust by yonder you ere distance perished ere a star began his clear monastic measure heard of few through lonelier glens of mine own being ran and thou to me wert dear because i knew the god who made thee gracious and the man two if by that second lover's power controlled in sweet symbolic right thy breath o'erfills fields of no war with vagrant daffodils from distance unto distance trailing gold if dazzling sands or thickets thee enfold transfigured usk where from their mossy sills grey hamlets kiss thee and by herded hills diviner run thy shallows than of old if intellectual these o oh, name thy vaughn creator too and close his memory keep who from thy fountain kind to him hath drawn birth energy and joy devotion deep a play of thought more mystic than the dawn and death at home and centuried sylvan sleep end of poem this recording is in the public domain writ in my lord clarendon's history of the rebellion by louise imogen guinea read for LibriVox.org by thomas peter how life hath cheapened and how blank the world is like a fen where long ago unstained sank the starry gentleman since marston moor and newbury drank king charles is gentleman if fate in any air accords what fate denied oh then i ask to be among your swords my joyous gentleman towards honour's heaven to go and towards king charles his gentleman end of poem this recording is in the public domain a last word on shelley by louise imogen guiney read for librivox dot org by eva davis a last word on shelley each great inrolling wave a league of sound all night all day the hostile crags confound to merest snow and smoke the crags remain smile at the storm for our safe poet's sake not ever this ordained world shall break that mounting foolish foam bright heart again end of poem this recording is in the public domain An Epitaph for William Hazlitt by Louise Imogen Guiney, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. An Epitaph for William Hazlitt Between the wet trees and the sorry steeple, keep time in dark Soho what once was Hazlitt, seeker of truth and finder oft of beauty. Beauty's a sinking light, ah, none too faithful. But truth who leaves so here, her spent pursuer, forgets not her great pawn, herself shall claim it. Therefore sleep safe, thou dear and battling spirit, safe also on our earth, begetting ever some one love worth the ages and the nations. Nothing falls under to thine eyes eternal. Sleep safe in dark Soho, the stars are shining, Titian and Wordsworth live, the people marches. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Emily Bronte by Louise Imogen Guiney, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Emily Bronte What sacramental hurt? that brings the terror of the truth of things, had changed thee. Secret be it yet, 
twas thine upon a headland set to view no isles of man's delight with lyric foam and rainbow flight but all a swing a gleam mid slow uproar black sea and curved uncouth sea bitten shore end of poem this recording is in the public domain Pax Paganica by Louise Imogen Guiney, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. Pax Paganica Good oars for Arnold's sake, by Laleham lightly bound, and near the bank, O oh soft, darling swan. Let not the o'er-weary wake anew from natal ground, but where he slumbered oft, slumber on. Be less than boat or bird, the pensive stream along, no murmur make nor gleam at his side. Where was it he had heard of warfare and of wrong? Not there in any dream since he died. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Valediction, RLS 1894, by Louise Imogen Guiney, read for LibriVox.org, by Eva Davis. Valediction, RLS 1894. When from the vista of the book I shrink, from lauded pens that earn ignoble wage, begetting nothing joyous, nothing sage, nor keep with Shakespeare's use one golden link, when heavily my sanguine spirits sink to read too plain on each impostor page only of kings the broken lineage well for my peace if then on thee i think louis our priest of letters and our knight with whose familiar baldric hope is girt from whose young hands she bears the grail away all glad all great Truer, because thou wert, I am and must be, and in thy known light go down to dust, content with this my day. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.